Coach Kermit Davis and the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee enter tonight's conference tournament as the number one seed and outright regular season. how it's done. Conference is committed to academic excellence. During the last year, the Sun Belt Conference set all time records, recognizing 1,800 student athletes for their accomplishments in the classroom. The academic honor roll is comprised of those students who have earned a 3.0 to 3.49 grade point average. Tonight, we would like to recognize these student athletes. The academic honor roll member from Middle Tennessee, Gavin Gibson. And the following student athletes reached the pinnacle of athletic achievement by earning all Sun Belt Conference recognition. Named to the all Sun Belt Conference third team from the Blue Raiders, Bruce Massey. And Raymond Cintron. Named to the All Sun Belt Conference first team, Marcus Knight. The Sun Belt's all time winningest coach, Kermit Davis, and the Blue Raiders of the Sun Belt Conference Defensive Player of the Year, Bruce Massey. The Sun Belt Conference Coach of the Year, Kermit Davis. Fans, on February the 16th, Middle Tennessee's Kermit Davis picked up his 113th Sun Belt Conference victory, becoming the all-time winningest coach in conference history. At this time, we would like to recognize this outstanding achievement and honor the winningest coach in Sun Belt Conference men's basketball history, Kermit Davis. And our final award to hand out tonight, recognizing the 2013 Eastern Division champions and overall Sun Belt Conference basketball regular season champions, the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a huge round of applause for these outstanding student athletes?
And now for the Raging Cajuns, first team all-conference, and a guy that gets to the glass, Alfred Payton. He leads their team in scoring, long, athletic, just loves going to that bucket. He can get the ball to the open man, and he's also good off the dribble. He's a fun player to watch. Ought to be a fun matchup tonight. The number one seed and trying to knock off that number one seed. Solid, fun, March Madness basketball, Sunbelt style. Sunbelt Conference Basketball is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. Go to GEICO.com now or call 1-800-947-AUTO for a free quote. See how much you could save. By Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. By Take 5 Oil Change, home of the 5-Minute Oil Change. And by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $2,000 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at Louisiana Propane com At guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Gretna, Louisiana. Number two, Alfred P. For the Blue Raiders, at guard, a 6'2 senior from Prince, Georgia. Number four. men's basketball tournament. This is night number two. Louisiana Lafayette won last night. They get the right to take on number one, Middle Tennessee. Now let's take a look at who has the Comcast business edge to the game. Coach, how about Middle Tennessee? Well, Tom, they have to shut down long inside. And secondly, the Blue Raiders rebound well, so they need to get some good second shots and some baskets out of it. On the other side for the Raging Cajuns, well, the Raging Cajuns need to score well off of their break, and they really like to go. And secondly, they need to score well from behind the arc. The winningest coach in the Sun Belt, Kermit Davis, done a terrific job. 208 wins in his 10 years. About 20 wins a year. That's really outstanding. He's been terrific for them. First of all, for the Blue Raiders, our lineups. Massey, Knight are two guys that are terrific. J.T. Salton is a guy who's been hurt all season, now coming back. And last game against Western Kentucky, we saw what he can do. That's an outstanding lineup there, very deep. For the Raging Cajuns, Bamaloo's a guy that can score, but it's long right there. And obviously their point guard, Peyton, are guys that can play. And that's brought to you by Louisiana Cat. Bob Marlin, third year. You and I had a great chance to visit with him yesterday. We talked to all the coaches we're going to cover tonight. Bob was really engaging. He said, look, we got to play great. They may have to play a little bit below what they normally do. Can we win? Well, you know what? He's got such a young team. Yeah. He's, talking about, he's only got one senior on the team. And for Middle Tennessee, they're the experienced team. They've been there before. They know what it's all about. It'll be interesting to see whether the kids can play with the seniors. And the, the, the first five minutes, you, you people talk about that, but when you got seniors playing against freshmen and sophomores, but those freshmen and sophomores can be just jacked up after that win last night. Anytime you play against Middle Tennessee, you try to bring your best game. And it'll be interesting to see if the Raging Cajun can do it tonight. Our officials for the ball game tonight, Brett Hampton, Glenn Tewitt, and Jose Carrier. Tonight's opening tip-off brought to you by Atmos Energy and Let's Play Ball, Coach. Sean Long, the freshman of the year, will jump center for the Raging Cajuns. J.T. Sultan will for the Blue Raiders. 
I don't know if this guy could kill. Oh, I didn't think he could keep the it. <laughs> I didn't think he could keep it going once they had the little false start. And the Blue Raiders get the tip. That wasn't close, was it? No. No. That's Bruce Massey, all defensive player of the year for the conference. Third team all conference as the 15 footer is no good. Fight for the rebound goes out of bounds and it'll stay right there with Middle Tennessee. And that's something I expect them to do is really hit those boards hard. I just talked about that and they got to get, yeah. some, they should be able to get some easy baskets out of it. And what they'll do is they'll screen a lot and get those short mid range jump shots. Sean Jones loves that baseline jumper. A 6'8 junior from Hialeah, Florida. Third team all state in high Bruce. school. Get to him. Pressure. And they have so many players that can do the same thing. They'll keep a lot of pressure up on Peyton and just try to wear him down. Because he can, oh, he can do that. And when he gets to the basket like that, Coach, he creates so many problems for the other team. He leads the league in assists, and it, he sets it up. We don't even see him set it up by the jab step towards us, got the defense leaning, and then was able to cut to the basket, and now he's at the free throw line. So Peyton, Sunbelt Player of the Week, February 25th, he averaged 27 points, six rebounds, and four assists that week. Did he six the man because he did everything else? Oh, he did. He, there's so many times he does so many things. He's so much fun to watch. Such a smart player. And he can't buy that one. No, and his, his free throw shooting has really improved this year. It wasn't very good last year, but it has gotten much better. 66% yeah, this year. Blue Raiders work that ball around the outside. They're trying to spread the defense along the baseline. That's their goal. They like to dribble weave, you know, drive that middle and then create offense out of it. Got a little slap and came up with the basketball. Here's Peyton in transition. He's always looking to get to the basket. Inside long posts up. They double team. Peyton kicks it out. Baseline jumper Mike Thompson hits that three. They really reacted well. The Raging Cajun to the trap, back out to their hero Peyton. And then he threw the ball over to Thompson, and Thompson nailed it. Jones now top of the circle has hit two in a row. Got the baseline jumper and then the top of the circle shot. The left-hander, Sean Jones, again from Florida. That's about as far out as he'll shoot it, but well, that's a big plus if he can do that. And the ball was kicked, so it'll belong to the Raging Cajuns on the side. Now the Cajuns are going to spread you out. They'll get long inside. He'll come up and screen some on the ball and create angles for those guys to drive. But ultimately, you got to get the ball down inside the line. Peyton comes around the screen. They switch most screens, does Middle Tennessee. As there's a jumper that goes in for Brian Bamalou from Houston, Texas, a 6'2 junior. Bamalou and Peyton and Long account for 65% of the scoring for the Raging Cajuns. They average 71 points a game as a team. Now only one point less than the Blue Raiders. Yeah. On the drive, that shot deflected, but a foul will be called. Eldridge Moore, a 6'5 junior from New Orleans, will pick up the foul. The two defense, teams combined four of five from the field so far. Well, I know. They're really shooting well. The defense adjusted to play Massey to, to prevent the drive to the middle, and he just went right to the bucket. But you know what the Cajuns did wrong? You've got Long standing there. Let Long come over and block it. Don't foul in that situation. Massey from Dodge City Community College, Germantown, Maryland. He was honorable mention all conference at Dodge City. Like we said, defensive player of the year, third team all conference. Around and out and hold it. Somebody came in too soon. Peyton went in too soon, so they'll get one more. You're good, Bruce. You're good, Bruce. The little mistakes, aren't they, Coach? They're little, but they're big. You, know, you just don't want to give them uh, three opportunities to make two points. You That's the old NBA to... rule. Three to make two, and he took care of it. Massey, a 69% free throw shooter. I anticipate them picking Peyton up in the backcourt this entire game. From 17, that jumper from Thompson around and out. That was a good look. Good curl. Was a good look, yeah. 
nice dish inside. That's a pretty play. J.T. Sultan, the recipient, and he drops that home. Knight did a great job. He pulled up, didn't over-penetrate, waited till he was open, and then made an excellent feed. We saw Sultan go wild, didn't we? I mean, yeah. he had a great game last game. Well, this one's going on. We got another game next door. This is a terrific setup. There's the game next door. FIU playing Arkansas Little Rock in the lane. That one was partially blocked. Now Long goes up and gets fouled. This is really an interesting sit-up. We'll try and go back and forth. Oh, how about FIU? Two minutes left in the first half. Up 34-19. Richard Patino has got them playing really well. And, and evidently with just UAR only having 19 points, there's got to be a lot of pressing going on, and evidently FIU's presses are working right now. We'll get the winner of that one tomorrow night here on TV. And we'll go to that at halftime as well. And fans literally now, Bob, it's about 100 yards from one to the other to go back and forth. So if it's halftime in one game, you can wander over, watch the other one for 10, 12 minutes, and then come back. Oh, it was neat last night. You and I had a ball, didn't yes, we? Yes, It's a lot of really good basketball. One-point game here early going. Kerry Hammonds had it. Got it to Massey. They want to go down low. Now White. A night comes way out. Shot clock at 12. Marcus Knight's got a younger brother, Tweety Knight, on the ball club. Shot clock at 3, 2, Sultan, tough shot. How about that? As the shot clock was about to go off, it ends up to be a pretty good pass. Got to make sure you block out. You're right. Nobody else went up for the ball. And it was easy for Sultan just to put the ball back in the basket. Peyton looking has done a lot of dribbling. Now finds Long, who likes that three-point shot. Likes a three-point shot, and he likes taking the ball to the basket a little bit. Shot clock at 10, and they've really got nothing going and are bailed out by a foul. J.T. Sultan from Yazoo City, Mississippi will pick up the foul, and here's that pretty pass inside. Dropped home by Sultan. We got a three-point ball game here in Hot Springs, Arkansas, round two of the Sun Belt Conference Basketball Tournament. Ten seven, about four minutes gone here in the first quarter. Coach, what'd you see? Well, Bomalu throws a ball in to the post, and then you're going to see a Middle Tennessee trap run that thing, and then Long does a great job of reversing the ball out to Peyton, who throws it over to the open shooter. That's the way you want to offensively attack trapping on the post. And that's what. Middle Tennessee is really good. They put a lot of pressure on. Their man-to-man -man defense is terrific. We'll see Arkansas State a little bit later on, another really good man-to-man -man defensive team. But what, to me, what Middle Tennessee does so well is put that pressure on you. They'll allow you to get it inside if you get it in there, but they're going to really make you work. 
Their quickness allows them to get down and trap and rotate back out quickly and rotate back over to open players. Payton gets it into Bamaloo and they got a fresh shot clock. Back to Payton. There's a little bit of a hedge there. A lot of times they're trapping. Peyton looking. He just cannot get to the basket, coach. There he goes. That's where he's so good. He can't get it. And the Blue Raiders right there for the rebound with Sultan. Quick pass down the floor. Inside. Sultan with the hammer and a foul. Sultan continues to just dominate. I mean, earlier in the year, he had an injury, wasn't as good, but I mean, he has just come forward and is making so many plays for the Blue Raiders. It just, wow, huh? Third team all conference last year, had the back injury a lot of this year. When you and I were talking to Kermit Davis last night, he said, the last two, three weeks, he's been healthy. He's a different player, and we're a different team because of it. And they continue, the Blue Raiders continue to put pressure on um, Peyton, and that is going to create problems if Louisiana Lafayette can't get the ball into him. Jones, Massey, Sultan, all four points or more. So those three have done all the scoring, and Peyton throws it away. Peyton looks frustrated, Coach. Doesn't he a little bit? A little bit. I don't think he's quite as quick as he was last night. I think he's done a great job of setting his man up both times that he's gotten the ball to the basket. He should have made that last bucket. But this is the kind of pressure you're referring to that creates problems for a team. Quick pass inside and long right there after the block. I and I would think the Raging Cajuns need to get something going here. And I think the Raging Cajuns need to get going quicker. Oh, great defensive play. Wow. Sean Jones, terrific play to knock that pass away. Good drive to the basket. The defense comes over. And Peyton was up in the air, used his hands extremely well. Jones did a great job. I'm surprised when Peyton drove to the basket, he didn't throw it up once Jones started to commit and then let Long just jam it. Because that's one of their favorite plays for uh, for Long. We, he did that two, three times oh, last yeah. night. And very effectively. But he, they may think this is a different team and maybe we can't do it. You, know, you don't know what's going through their mind. Young kids versus the seniors. Yeah, just what we talked about earlier. Peyton looking for a little spot to penetrate. Oh, Moore had a chance, but didn't take it. Thompson had a three early in this ball game. They got long down in, but they're not getting the ball in a position to throw it to him. Pass deflected. Long couldn't come up with it. Thompson came over to help out here. It's 29 who lays it in. That pressure defense coach gets him a lot of layups during the season. Creates a lot of offense out of their defense. But the Raiders Cajuns have got to get the ball and go. They're, I think, a little bit too slow and hesitant right now. Thompson with a big three. He's been the Johnny come lately. He's done a marvelous job in the last 10 or 12 games for them. Raymond Cintron from San Juan, Puerto Rico, is in the ball game. He's on the other side right now. Fake a three, nice drive, and he got caught in the air and throws it away. Stop the ball! Stop the ball! Peyton in transition. Stop this is where I think he would be really excited. Runner on the way. That's a tough shot, though. I don't know why he didn't use take a glass. shot. That's a big difference. Yeah, I don't. He should have used it. Got a charge. And got a charge. Halftime next door. Well, Arkansas Little Rock's come back a little bit. 34-26, they've got that back to an eight-point ball game. They've got the ability and the ball handling skills, especially if neighbors handle the ball well. He's an extra ball handler where they should be able to effectively go against a press. We saw that game during the regular season. Early in the season, yeah, it was a big win for Little Rock. Little Tennessee on a 10 to 5 run. This is where Peyton is so good. Oh, he got hit hard and goes out of bounds. And Bob Marlin is more restrained than a lot of coaches would be, I would think, right now. No call on this. No one. call on that, but you think there was contact there? <laughs> yes. 
That's just my guess. There might have been a little contact. On I think part. you could have heard me if I'd have been the coach uh, in the next door in the exactly. arena next door. Exactly. Screaming. Exactly. Yeah. Five point ball game. That's Thompson with it. Bamalou. They contest every shot and force that turn. Tom, they've got to get control here of these turnovers because if they don't, they're taking themselves out of offensive plays. They're giving too many opportunities for the Blue Raiders, and it's just going to really put them in a difficult position. Coach Marlin uh, could take a timeout. We, he's got to resolve some of those issues, but a great job by the Blue Raiders. Sean Long played 36 minutes last night. And Peyton played 38 minutes. Standing right there, loose basketball, and that's they that? get so many of those 50-50 balls. That's what that's called when it's loose and either team can come up with it. Now Walker top of the circle jump. 17-18 foot shot. Both defensive players went over to the ball and he was wide open. Corey Walker knocks that one home. 17 to 10 now is our score. So the numbers from the field. Raging Cajuns have to find a way to score. Now it could be easier said than done. It's the top defensive team in the league, top three-point defensive team in the league. If you look at almost any category, Thompson drives in, puts up a giant killer. That's a little too strong. They just can't find an easy way. They can't find good shots right now. And they're not reacting to the traps off the dribble screens very well at all and not getting the bow back to the open man for them. Eldridge Moore called with a hold. 11 minutes, 56 seconds. JT sold with an exclamation point. Nice pass as he cuts right to the basket. A seven-point lead for the Blue Raiders, the number one seed, Middle Tennessee. Fans, follow the Sunbelt Conference on Twitter and Facebook for all the latest updates from around the league. Be sure to get the inside scoop by following us at twitter.com slash the Sunbelt and head over to facebook.com slash the Sunbelt Conference. Middle Tennessee, five assists on seven basket. They also have seven of the ten rebounds. Right now, I think Louisiana Lafayette is playing a little unsure, a little tentative. A little bit slower, a little bit intimidating. Whatever, they're not as focused, they're not as quick, they're not as uh, aggressive, they're not doing the things that got them the win last night. They got to get out of that. Cintron down into the corner, baseline three, and everything is going now for Middle Tennessee. Shane Gilman from Knoxville, Tennessee. And a nine-point lead. Peyton, nice dish inside. And you can see he hesitated before he shot the ball. Exactly. He was, will he block it or whatever, instead of just going strong and being assertive and aggressive. 
And a foul on Peyton. His first, though, again, away from the ball. That's their second straight away from the ball foul. This copyrighted telecast of the Sunbelt Conference basketball may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the Sunbelt Conference, CST, and CSS. Peyton's gotten banged around a couple times, and he's foolish with a kind of retaliation. Get that isn't how you do it. Mm -hmm. He's oh throwing no! the ball away more than I've seen him. Massey back to the rim, and the rebound tapped will go out of bounds and belong to Louisiana Lafayette. Now they bring brought in a freshman, Steve Ronkowski. Pretty good three-point shooter. Ronkowski right there crossing half court number shooter. four. He's a guy that can spread the defense. Bamaloo had that knocked away. Ronkowski had that one knocked away. Boy, they're getting a hand on so many balls. Bamaloo is a, it was a bad pass. That's his second bad pass in a row. The pressure is up on him. I don't think uh, the Raging Cajuns are doing a good enough job of setting their man before they come after the ball. They're cutting in straight lines. It's easier to guard that. Blue Raiders have six players scored. their 8 of 11 from the field as long. Wants it down low. He's posted up. Peyton instead finds Ronkowski. There's that baseline jumper in and out. And again, here comes Middle Tennessee. Jumper on the way, and wow. Hey, this is a clinic. Bruce Massey just dropped that off. This is a clinic, Coach. Well, Massey, nobody was guarding Massey. I, I, I couldn't figure out what exactly was going on, and Ronkowski finally came out and put mediocre pressure on him. Long with a right hand, a tough move. Got that one to fall in. Sean Long with the basket. They got to get the ball down inside more. And now Peyton has picked up his second personal foul, and that spells trouble. His, his body language and everything else, is, he doesn't have the focus he needs to right now in order to lead his basketball. And Bob Marlin wants to talk about it. They're going to take a 30 second timeout. All right, I'm going to put you in the huddle now with the Raging Cajuns, coach. You got a point guard who's shook, who's not doing what you want him to do. He's a sophomore and he's your best player. First team off conference. What do you say to the rest of your team and to him? Well, I think you've got to talk about, hey, we're, we're not playing what or doing what we need to do in order to be productive. You need to keep push, pushing. You need to keep going. And then you specifically say relative to passing, get the ball inside or whatever it is you want to do. And you just be really positive, assertive and aggressive. Sunbelt playoffs continue on CSS. Coming up tomorrow, don't miss the men's and women's semifinals. Visit css-sports.com for matchups and times. And if it was me. And I like it. I like exactly what you're saying. If you get down on him right now, he could disappear. Well, exactly. And what you got to say is, hey, come on, you're the leader. You're as good as anybody, and you're not doing what you can do. You can be negative in a positive way. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good way to say it. Massey with Peyton right there, and there's a foul again away from the ball. This time, Bamalu is going to pick up the personal foul. This is their third off-the-ball foul, and those are just a killer, Coach. It's a killer because they're a step slow, they're not reacting well, and the Raging, the Raging Cajuns have got to get that under control, and the Blue Raiders, they can look at you, and they can look in your eyes and say, we got you, yeah. we got you. Yeah. Oh, a dunk off the inbound by Sultan. He's right there and hammers it home. You've seen Massey right there. This is the defensive player of the year. Fake of the jump shot. Now a little leaner, and that'll go for Bamaloo. And now Kermit Davis wants a timeout. And he's looking back at Marcus Knight. He is very unhappy with Marcus Knight. Oh, is he giving it to him? Well, see, but I think he's using it for motivation. He knows he's in control right now, but he doesn't want him to all of a sudden get soft. So with his personality, and we've seen it in a couple games, he's very assertive and very aggressive. So he's going to come after you a little bit. But hey, they're winning all the time. So it's, kids so can accept that. So it's really not directed at Massey. It's directed at everybody, but he saw one little thing. Thank you.
and he's trying to keep his team on edge. Yeah, that's exactly what I think is going on, and I think that's very good uh, coaching. Because you're, you're ready, and you can't let him get it. And, you know, and everybody is, gets a little bit more. You're getting red in the face. You're oh, into this. Oh, you're I ready. love that. You are ready to start. But this is why this guy is back-to-back -back conference coach of the year. You, you know, he's, he does a marvelous job. But I give Coach Marley credit for his timeout, and in his personality, I think he did exactly what needed to be done. So both coaches are doing what they need to do. Trying to post up down low, and that's right where they go. So the back end left-handed hook is a little off, and Perfect now here come the Raging Cajuns trying to move up the floor. Pamelou on top, Ronkowski. He'll drive in, goes to the glass, and the freshman with a nice play. Good screen by Long, got an angle, hesitated, and can I say exploded to the basket? Well, I don't know if I'd go that far, but he got there. Yeah, doggone right he did. Tough jumper in traffic by Sean Jones. Oh, defense right in his face, and he knocks that home. Yeah, I was surprised if uh, he was able to get that shot over long and in the bucket. And Ronkowski has come on and done a pretty nice job for this club. Now they go to a zone. 1-3-1, one, one, it's a trapping zone, but they don't need long out there. That's an air ball, and that one was that close, and here they come. On the run, stolen away by Thompson. Thompson takes it right down the floor with a left hand no, but the foul will be called, and the senior, Mike Thompson, will go to the line. And that's a pretty nice defensive play and transition. Oh, he makes a great play there. Comes behind, jars it loose, and then he reads the situation well. Does he uses the left hand well, protects the ball, and at the free throw line for the Raging Cajun. They need some of that to get them going. First one good for Thompson. See the second half. Yeah, the second half of the year, he's averaged over 10 points a game. I said, I called him Johnny come lately. Yeah. He's the guy that has really kept them in it while they struggled. And the one senior, he's got to lead tonight if he's going to be, if his team's going to survive. Came up short. It's a six point game. Blue Raiders, 69% from the field, seven assists, eight rebounds. 10 points in the paint. That's strong. Oh, and Thompson almost got another one. He, he did, well, that was a fingertip away from a layup. Jones, ball fake, and Ronkowski tapped that one away. And as I remember now, that's the first time Lafayette has gotten a touch on a ball and knocked it away. Well, I thought they'd been a little bit more assertive and aggressive than on that drive. Casey Shepard came over and stopped the penetration on the drive, and Ronkowski rotated down. I thought that was good defense by the Raging Cajun. Turn! Turn. Runner off the glass. No, tip, no, and over the back. Marcus Knight will be called for the personal foul. Hey, we got a six-point ball game, and the Raging Cajuns have it with 7.52 left. Looked like a blowout. We got a ball game.
tonight on Cox Sports Television after we wrap up the men's quarterfinal game. Stay tuned for CST Tonight live from the Louisiana Cat Studio. CST Tonight brings you the latest sports news, scores, highlights from around the world of sports, along with feature reports from CST reporters that you can't get anywhere else. Tune in every Saturday for the best weekly sports coverage only on CST. Well, now I'm going to put you in the huddle on the other side. I want to put you in Kermit Davis' huddle. Let's talk a little bit about he called the timeout and he got after Massey and got after everybody. Now he's got a six point ball game and the Raging Cajuns have the basketball. They've got to feel like they're back in this game. What I think Coach Davis is doing is talking about offensively the kinds of things that got him the lead. What got him go that uh, uh, lead and we need to go back to that. And he can talk about his offense or he can talk about his defense. When he got the lead he jarred the ball loose. Now all of a sudden they've stopped doing that. How come? You're not up in the passing lanes enough. You're not reacting well enough. And down on the other end, you got the ball inside and you were able to get the ball off the glass and put it back in. All of a sudden, that stopped. So pick your uh, pick whatever you want to talk about, but you need to hit both areas. Referees are at the scorer's table, at least one referee is over there at the scorer's table. The last foul was on Marcus Knight, and I know there was some question after the play ended about who the foul was on, and definitely it was on Marcus Knight. He was the guy that came over the back. All right, six-point ball game, and here they are picking them up in the backcourt again. Whenever Peyton is around, they're going to pick him up. Now, I don't think that's great pressure right there, and I thought they were going to put really good pressure on him. All right, Thompson with it. Got to get long down in. He can't stay out there. They're getting further and further away. Here goes Peyton as he goes off the glass. And he got bumped out in the lane. And now Peyton's starting to do a little bit more of what he does. I thought Coach Marlin did a great job of taking him out and giving him a break right there and letting him collect himself. It was a very good drive. And did you notice how he cups the ball almost yeah. like a football yeah. player? Yeah. That's something they teach anymore so that you don't get the ball slapped away as quickly. Just like you don't fumble in football because people come in and they'll punch it, they'll hit it, they'll do all kinds of things trying to knock that ball away. We didn't teach that. Yeah, 15, 20 years ago, were, you, were your perimeter players ever? I think that's been something the last four or five years. Coach, if I was out with the perimeter players, I was hurt. I was never with the perimeter players, and I don't know what they did. What I, oh, okay, that's what I meant. Maybe you happen to <laughs> eavesdrop. We call it dipping. Maybe yeah, you right, dip right. one. No, okay. no, no. It didn't see, happen. He, he knocks the free throw. In. He's got to score. His first point. And that's his first point. And again, you never know what gets a kid like this off the schneid. He is a first team all conference player. Those are two really good looking free throws. We got a four point ball game. And we got a little bit of a zone press. Like what, you know, okay. Oh, you can't let him go all the wow. way to the basket, man. No. He did not slow down the whole way. He's good taking the ball to the basket, but the defense just never rotated over and stopped the penetration of the dribble. We'll get it inside. Nice fake by Bamalu, lead leaner, and he's going back to the free throw line. And this may be the way they're going to get into this, Coach, is from the free throw line. But the key to me, they're going to the basket. You know something else out of that play. they got to go to the basket when they put that pressure up. And, and if they let it roll just a little bit, Long is over there with his arms out like saying, get the ball into me. And one of the things I used to tell our players is, hey, you big fellas, if you don't get the ball and you don't say anything about it, it's your fault. You right, get after right. those perimeter guys and tell them you want the ball. Yeah, if you don't call for the ball, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's your fault. You know, I mean, come on. Be assertive and aggressive enough to say, get me the basketball or uh, don't complain when it doesn't come inside. They're struggling from that free throw line. They just can't get that free throw to start falling. A little trap, as you talked about. Blue Raiders handle that. Now Hammonds for three, back of the rim, and Peyton right there. I don't think the Blue Raiders are going after the ball as well as they did earlier. Peyton with a high dribble, goes by his man, leans in, and he got fouled going to the basket. A very late call, and oh, is Kermit Davis upset? 
Well, you know what? Did you see him put the ball in his left hand? He was going to dunk with his left hand. Not very many guards can dunk no. with the left hand yeah. when they're right handed. What a great play. I thought it was a good call. Yeah, it's a good call. And, but it was late, and I don't know why it was late. I thought it was an easy call to call right away. They're just are struggling at the free throw line. That's that. You know, and uh, as a coach, it drives you nuts because if they're knocking their free throws in, they're right there. I mean, they're close anyway, but it'd be a tie ball game if they knocked their free throws in. What's he, one for four or something like that? Yeah, two. I think he's made two. Now he's trying to think his way through, and you can't do that. Get up and shoot the ball, son. Just shoot the ball. Oh, great hesitation by Massey. Oh, baby. Hunter with the jumper. Nope. Rebound tapped and long right there. He got lucky. I think Mike Thompson tapped that too here. It's a five-point game. Here's Ronkowski for three. And Kermit Davis wants another timeout. The freshman, Steve Ronkowski, nails a three. He has been red hot from the field and the free throw line, and he's feeling it right now. 47% of his shots come from three-point land. And see, they're, they're really slow. Hunter's really slow rotating after him. Hello? The kid shoots the ball. A lot more intensity and purpose than what we just saw. So I, I think Coach Davis did the right thing. This is a one-point game with with the Raging Cajuns not being able to shoot free throws. And if they were able to hit free throws, you'd be the, the Blue Raiders would be five, six points down. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Ronkowski, first team All-State as a senior. Also played wide receiver and safety. He was honorable mention All-State in football. So he's a tough kid. And I tell you, you never know when you're dialing a number as a head coach and you think, you know what, nobody can score. We can't throw the ocean right now. Let me throw this kid in and see how he does. He's come in and really played well. You are right. Some, some of the greatest tactical moves I made bench-wise <laughs> was just, you know. Nobody else. I got no, what exactly. else am I going to do? You just, you know, and it looks great. And, and in the press conference, you take Oh, away. absolutely. Take all he the just press made another away. play. He made a steal. Gets it to Peyton. Now he wants it. He's calling for the ball. He's the X factor right now in this basketball game. Chance to tie here with a deuce. You see him dive on the floor and oh, keep yeah. that ball alive. Oh, yeah, now it's stolen away. And a smart play by Peyton. Oh, but they call a, an intentional foul. Which is the right call, but rarely called in a play like this. You know, he, he gets careless with the ball. Anytime you just stand and dribble the ball and allow the defense just to, to not get their weight on their heels, you're asking for trouble. And then, yeah, he does a foolish thing. It was a simple call. That's, That's his, his third foul. foul. That's a problem. So they get... Massey misses the free throw. And they're going to get the ball out of this. Yeah. So you got right now, you got a potential for four points. If he hits this and hits a three-point club. Well, you know the question everybody wants to know: Do you leave Peyton in? No, you take him out. Yeah, you got a two-point ball game. Yeah, it's it's way too early in the game to leave him in. If you were 10, 12 points down, you might take him out, get his head together, get an assistant or somebody to talk to him, and then get him back in. But right now, no, it's a close game. Raging Cajuns are 5 of 11 from the free throw line. Middle Tennessee State 4 of 5. Such a long three. Raymond Centron, who is on the Puerto Rico under 18 team, made the all international team at the World Games. 79% of his shots come from that range. And again, Raging Cajun, hello, fellas. You got to go out there and guard that guy. Six point ball game, and there's a foul that really bailed them out. And Coach Davis has given it to that official. And it was an easy call, but what he's trying to do is get them to back off of that a little bit. And come on, let me trap these guys yeah, in let me hit them a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, it won't hit them hard, I promise. Oh, and now the Middle Tennessee fans are really upset. 
Coach Davis is now on his second official. <laughs> He's just going to work his yeah. way down. Send the other guy over here. Let me give you a piece of my mind as well. I want to holler at him, yeah, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Would the three of you come over here for a minute? That way I don't have to yell as long. Oh, gosh. Casey Shepard, a 6'3 freshman from Bikini High School in Houston. First team goes in and out. First team all district. District player of the year. National Honor Society. For Shepard. I'll tell, you, just four points. I'll tell you what though, Tom, you gotta take that, you gotta get that trapping resolved from an offensive standpoint because, because the Blue Raiders are gonna really make you pay for it if you don't. Did you see that stats? Now six of thirteen from the free throw line. And it's a five point game. If if you'd have said if I'd have said to you, hey, with five minutes to go, they're gonna be six of thirteen from the free throw line, you say oh, they'll be down fifteen, yeah. right? It'd be over. And you're not getting the ball along a lot, but you have been able to drive the ball out. Oh, they love those curls. They're really good at finding the open man out of those curls. Massey drives in, blocked, and an offensive foul called. Ronkowski, how about the freshman? Stands there and draws the charge. He has been a breath of fresh air for the Raging Cajun. Wasn't his man. It's about the third defensive play he's made in a help situation. Slides right over. Watch him come over there. Easy call. He's standing there like the Statue of Liberty, and they just plow right into him. Five-point ball game with five minutes left in the first half. And Long has not been a factor, and Peyton's out. How do you figure that? Well, they're going to the free throw line. That's really what's going on. And if they can keep going to the free throw line and maybe make a few, drive in, runner off the glass, not even close. And Tweety Knight right there pushes it ahead. Ball never left his hands. Inside, and a foul call. As Walker was going up, he'll go to the free throw line. Never got the ball out of his hands. And then a good transition here, great feed. And I, if they'll run the floor, Walker runs the floor. Their big men have been running the floor. They are the ones that have gotten the transition basket. And I've said, and I said before the game, the Cajuns need to get some. Not so, but they're not going with the same kind of speed that they did last night. Quickness, I should say. Torrin Walker. Now 18 to 23 from the free throw line. Maybe it's catching. Maybe it's something. Oh, it, could be. Uh, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Isn't that funny how it is, too? You know, if you make eight or nine, something like that, you feel like you're never going to miss. Look physical. Did you see that as Ronkowski trying to bring the ball inbound? And Ronkowski is setting that screen. Now, can't stand there with the ball right there. Shepard's got to go with the ball. Quick pass and Long almost threw that out of the building. He had just been a non-factor. There he is posted up. Ball he's, fake. Oh, he's good right there. Oh, that's not a good shot. He just threw that up with his right hand. Here comes Tweedy Knight. Hands it back. Jones off the glass and they just attack. They get into attack mode and can score in bunches. Long stayed right behind Walker and didn't try to get around him and put pressure on the shot. And it was an easy drive to the basket. Here's Long again. The jumper is short. Rebound fought for. Loose on the floor and Cintron tapped it. It'll belong to the Raging Cajuns when we come back. 334 left. Middle Tennessee on a bit of a run in Hot Springs. Sunbelt Conference Basketball is brought Sunbelt Conference Basketball is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. Go to GEICO.com now or call 1-800.